Hello and welcome to part six of the bungalow tutorial series. This is David Ward. When last I left you, we had gotten all of our doorways put in and as well as the doors themselves. Now, uh, one thing I'd like to do before we go any further is, uh, you remember I accidentally had two versions of the door where I, I missed Alt D on one of them and do Shift D instead. So now I have two separate groups of them. Now say for example I wanted to put them all in one group again so I just have to edit them one time. Well we don't have to go through and do each one again but we just have to select all the ones that are part of this group and the easy way to do that is just select like the big one right there that we have selected. We can go select linked object data and it'll select all the ones that have the same object data, all the instance ones of that particular one. So now I can shift select one of the other ones from the other group and go object make links object data boom and now if I select one you can see they're all part of the same instance group again so that's nice and handy to be able to do so um, uh, like I said in part five I'd like to go ahead and put a doorknob in here let's take a peek at that that's just a, a screen door type of thing with a little latch so we'll just have to kinda put in a basic doorknob here and then maybe fancy it up for the front door but for the in interior doors let's find one of these um, let's use this bedroom door right here so we'll just tab into actually let's do this shift H I want to hide everything except that door so I can work solely on the door and not have to you know maneuver around the walls and everything so I'll tab back into edit mode I'm going to put my 3D cursor, since it's an interior door, it's probably going to open like this. So I'm going to put the doorknob over here on this side. So let's just select this group of vertices here. It selects all the way through the door. Shift S, cursor to selected. And now I'm going to go Shift A, and I'm going to add in a cylinder. And I don't need it to have that many, uh, that, that many uh, vertices in it, so I'm going to hit the uh, T button to bring up my toolbar over here, toolbox. And also, I prefer to use triangle fans on here. I don't like N-Gons myself because, I mean, I like my meshes to be a little more clean and, and more uh, accurate. And if you're using an N-Gon, it's basically a polygon that has an infinite number of edges and, and corners. But you really don't want to go any further than four edges and corners if you can help it. So... Um, I like to use the triangle fan. So, that being said, uh, we don't need 32 vertices of there. I usually just go for about 12, and that usually does pretty well. Maybe 16. We'll go 16, just to make it a little more smooth. So now I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. And then, of course, we'll need to scale it down. Scale it way down. Okay, so this will be where the doorknob is on the door. Should be centered up pretty well. Yes. Okay, so like on the edges of the walls and everything, I'm going to separate these two so there's not so it's not just a, a cylinder through there. I want to add a couple of loops there. I'm going to go Control R, and I just realized my screencast keys are not on. So let's turn those on way down there. There we go. So I've got uh, those lines there, and now if I go to face select mode, they're already selected. I can just hit the D button or, or the delete button, and just say faces. Boom. So now we have two separate pieces. Okay, so now let's select this outer edge here and tell you what, why don't we just go ahead and delete this side and then we'll just duplicate this one when we get it done. That'll save us a little bit of work. So we'll select this whole side and I'm going to extrude it. And before I move it out, I'm just going to hit, just click to lock it in and then start scaling it down. And this will have a little bit of a taper effect. We'll come out a little bit here, make it a little smaller and extrude again, scale it down. And then let's extrude back in, and this will be where the actual handle of the doorknob starts coming out. So we'll go and extrude this way now. Make it a little smaller, and come on out a little bigger. And then we'll come on out a little bigger, and this will be the actual handle. I'm thinking it might be... The normals might be the wrong way. Let's see. Nope, they're all correct. Okay. That's an easy way to tell if your normals are facing the right way. Just hit the little little button right there, display face normals as lines, and it tells you exactly which direction they're pointing. So we'll just keep coming here, 
scale that down a little bit more. Scale that down. And then maybe like a little place here for a keyhole. We'll just come inside a little bit. Just like that. There we go. Okay, now on the doorknob, well, see on the doorknob itself, we can make it uh, smooth shaded, but it'll probably. Uh, options. Uh, no, where is it at? Smooth vertices? No. I guess it's only, yeah, when you come out of edit mode, it's smooth. But that'll mess up the rest of the door, so let's keep it flat. And if you want to make it a little more smooth in here, as you can see, it's a little faceted. It's not that big of a deal, but uh, you can always just uh, W subdivide smooth, and that'll add one more level of subdivision and be a little smoother. Still faceted. But uh, I guess that'll be fine. We'll grab that and bring that out a little bit. Actually, we can probably go ahead and delete that one. Let's bring this one in so it's going, th intersecting through the door. Let me make that doorknob a little bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so now we have a nice little doorknob. And we'll select everything. Just control L to select all that. Let's go to our top view. We're going to shift D to duplicate it. I'm actually duplicating this time, not an instance. You can't instance while you're in edit mode, so it wouldn't work even if you tried it. So I'm going to get that lined up perfectly right there with that middle line. There we go. Rotate it 180 degrees, and then we'll bring it to where it's on the other side of the door. So there we go. Now we have a door with doorknobs. So. There we go. So now if we Alt H, we can unhide everything else and you'll see that all of the other doors also have doorknobs on them now. Awesome. Good stuff right here. All right. Now, obviously they're a little skewed uh on the doors that are stretched out, but uh in the end these won't these doorways won't have doorknobs at all, so uh we'll get to that later. But uh for now, um I think they're jutting out a little too far. Let's tab into what happened there. It looks like it's crooked. No? Huh. Looks like it's crooked there. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the angle we're looking at. Huh. Weird. That looks very crooked, does it not? I think it does. It looks crooked to me. But according to the mesh... <laughs> oh, hey, get out of the way. Hit the 5 button, so we're going to perspective view. Okay, maybe it's just because we're in orthographic. That must have been it. Everything's kind of flattened out, like you're looking through a, a really high zoom telescope or something. Everything's flattened. So if we go to the perspective view, everything's good. Awesome. Okay, bathroom door is a little, little, little smashed, skewed. But once we get everything, like I said, everything all situated and get the um, materials on there, we can go back and edit the mesh. Sorry, I've got a phone call. Be right back. Okay, here we are. We're back. Okay, where was I? We just finished putting the doorknob on, and it looked a little too... I can jut it out a little too far. Uh, one thing I always forget to do when I, when I install a new version of Blender is to turn on the... Oh, it's already turned on. I don't know why this isn't working. Huh. Oh, I don't have that door selected, obviously. <laughs> Oi. There's one thing that's a little confusing about uh, these instances. You might look like you're editing where you're at, but you may not be. Do it on this side as well. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I got the doors all ready to start uh, putting textures on, but before we do that, well, a couple things I want to do. I want to get the roof on there first, the ceiling at least, so we have the interior. But uh, I want to do the windows, do the window panes. So let's take a peek back at that house. And it looks like it's six, six panes per half, so a dozen panes all together. And it's got a, a divider in the middle for it to slide open and closed. So piece of cake, easy enough. We can just do it one time. So let's do the same thing we did on the door and shift H to hide everything else. Then we'll put our 3D cursor right there, cursor to select it, tab into edit mode, and let's put our, hit our select everything in our period button on our numpad so that centers that in the scene. And now I can go shift A, I'm going to add a cube, scale it way down, 
I'll scale it on the x-axis so it fills the gap there and this is just the frame of the window the 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 trim now we actually need to make uh, a border for the window the glass of the window itself so this will be we'll start with the top half so we'll just make that a little more narrow I'm gonna uh, do like we did on the window make it have a 45 degree angle so let's actually let's just do this here until we drag this out until that line there doesn't have any jaggies on it, no jagged edges there, and that should be pretty straight. It's kind of hard to see. About, about right there looks good. And rather than do that twice, I'm just going to cut that in half. Actually, don't need to cut it in half. I can just drag, grab this edge here and drag it over to the middle, and just make sure I delete that face out of there so it doesn't double up on me. And okay, now I can select all this. Go back to front view. Shift D to duplicate. SX negative one. Good. Control N to flip those normals back. Plop that right down there. Line it up as best we can. Good. Okay. Grab our vertice, vertex select mode. Go there. W remove doubles. Remove four vertices. So it's now glued together. And we can also go um, uh, X and edge loop. So now we have a perfectly mirrored object there. So control L, shift D, rotate it 180 degrees for the top. And then we'll shift D, rotate it 90 degrees for the side over here. Get that lined up. We'll line it up on the top first. There we go. Shift D, rotate it 180. Move it in this place here. Boom. And then we can move the bottom one, just grab one vertex, control L, and I'll just move that down about to there. And then we can grab this whole bottom piece here and move it up just short of halfway. If we move it halfway, then there will be no overlap, and you want overlap on your window pieces because you don't want bugs and stuff to get in. So if you got overlap, uh, you can raise it up and down and never actually have it. Uh, I mean, if it's if it's closed, it'll be completely closed. So, uh, I'll, I'll explain later if that's uh, at, when we get to the bottom half. If that's confusing at all. Okay, so now uh, we need the individual panes inside here. So I'm going to go Shift A, add another cube. Back to our front view. Scale this one way down. Scale it up. This one I'm not going to put the angles in. It's just going to be flat pieces. Scale it on the y-axis to flatten it out like so okay and we'll just shift D over and make it as even as possible just kind of eyeballing it there okay then I'm going to shift D one more time rotate it 90 degrees and this will be our vertical divider okay and let's make this one even more narrow so that these vertical ones appear to be one big piece, which I guess they are, but then the horizontal ones will be smaller pieces. So I'm going to S Y to scale it down ever so slightly, make it a little smaller, like so. Okay, so now we need the actual glass itself. So uh, we could just use a plane, but I want it to have both sides. So I'm going to go ahead and add another cube. Move this one up into place here. Scale it on the x-axis where it fits inside that frame. Then we'll go to our side view, scale it on the y-axis, really small. Actually, I am not in edit mode right now, so I need to do that in here. So, same thing, shift A, cube, and then just bring it up, scale it on the y-axis, real narrow, real thin, thin as glass, literally. That's why I think I hit the T on accident. So we're going to make it even more narrow than that narrow strip there. So a little bit more. A little bit more. Probably not a storm window. I'm sure it would break quite easily if someone threw a rock. But uh, anyways, let's get this over here. Just inside the edge of the frame. Over here. And it's good on the top and the sides, but on the bottom here, I want to bring it down a little further, so I'm going to go Control L, so I select them all. 
so I don't have to worry about accidentally selecting part of the frame. I'm going to hit the B button, hold down Alt, click and drag, and deselect those top ones so then I can just drag this bottom one down like so. Okay, so now we have our window and our glass. So what I was talking about earlier um, with the overlap, so we'll just select all that and the top one as well. There we go. Shift D, drag that down on the Z axis to about right there. Uh, this is a little too much here, but uh, I want to drag this one. I guess this one needs to be on the inside because it's the one that, you know, when you open your windows, you'll slide it up and down, which we can make a shape key that will do that for us if we want to have that animatable. So let's go to our top view and let's move that to where it's just on the other side of the top one, like so. Okay. So now, like I said, it's a little too high, so I'm going to deselect everything on the bottom, including the middle section, and just drag that down about like so. Let's take a peek at our, our picture. And the divider looks like it's about in the middle, so that's fine. So we'll just grab everything here in the middle and make sure it's right there on our 3D cursor because that was the center of our mesh there. Okay, so now what we need to do is just adjust this one horizontal divider there just a bit so there we go and let's take a peek again looks good looks good all right so let's move it a little further out let's just do this here select everything there control L and then we can just move it a little further out like so okay so now we have all our windows all set so we can hit alt H and unhide everything and now we have our windows all over isn't the instancing thing awesome save so much time okay so let's uh, real quick 17 minutes in um, let me just go ahead and create a, a quick it's gonna, I wanted to go ahead and create a quick roof line or a quick ceiling but uh, that might drag on a little bit so I'll just save that for part 7 so that's going to be it for part six. Um, thank you for watching, and we'll get into the ceiling and the roof and probably this facade here around the front door. If we look at our picture here, this little guy here, uh, and then the steps, and, and then we'll hopefully be able to start texturing after that. So that's going to be it for part six. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in part seven.